Hello students, welcome to video lesson 9.4b. Um, we're gonna continue talking about square roots in, in a certain context, but we're gonna broaden our discussion today to talk about the numbering system that we use as a whole, okay? So our main goal today is to be able to classify numbers that we see into certain categories, okay? And we're gonna talk through the categories, all the ones that we're gonna to have to worry about, um, what each of them means, okay, what the criteria are, and then we'll, we'll practice a little bit deciding where they go, okay? So the most broad category of numbers that exists um, for us right now is the real numbers, okay? And real numbers just means all the numbers, okay? All the numbers that we could possibly see in the world, those are, the real numbers, every decimal, every fraction, every negative number, every positive number, every single number ever in existence um, is a real number, okay? And then all of these other categories are within the real numbers, okay? So smaller categories within the real numbers. So the first one is irrational numbers, and the opposite of an irrational number is a rational number, okay? So the first thing that we see is the real numbers get split into irrational on one hand and rational on the other hand, okay? Irrational, rational. The difference is rational numbers can be written as fractions, okay? A rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction, okay? Now, it doesn't necessarily have to look like a fraction to be a rational number, okay? A rational number could be something like uh, 0.5, right? That in itself is not a fraction. This is not a fraction right now. But could we write that as a fraction? Yes, we could. We could just write one half, right? One over two as a fraction. So um, decimals that stop are rational numbers because we can always write them as a fraction, right? Even if we had something like this, 0.5314, um, we've talked before, actually, about writing these decimals as fractions by basically taking all the digits in the, in the decimal number and putting it over 10,000 in this case, okay, or over 1,000 or over 10 or over 100, depending on what place our decimal goes out to. In this case, we go to the 10,000, so we would put it over 10,000. So any decimal that stops can always be written as a fraction, okay? Um, so a, a decimal that stops is a rational number. Also, a decimal that repeats itself, if it did this, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, over and over and over and over again, that would also be uh, a rational number, okay? This is also a rational number. As long as we could put that repeating bar over it, we could write it as a fraction, okay? We could write it as a fraction. I'm not going to make you write them as fractions, but we just have to recognize the types of decimal numbers that we could write as fractions, okay? So just keep in mind, decimal numbers can be rational. In fact, most of them are if they stop at a certain point or if they repeat themselves over and over and over again forever, okay? Um, also keep in mind that a number that doesn't look like a fraction but could be would be like the number 14, right? This is not currently a fraction, but could we write it as a fraction? We certainly could. We can always write numbers like this as fractions by just putting them over one, right? 14 over one, that's now a fraction. That's the same thing as 14. So every number that doesn't have a decimal part, which we'll get to in a second, those are also rational numbers, okay? So rational numbers are almost all of the numbers that we have seen so far in our math classes up to this point, okay? They're rational numbers. They're decimals that stop, or they're whole numbers, or they're fractions, right? Five over six, or 17 over four. Those are all uh, rational numbers, okay? The opposite of that is an irrational number. And an irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a fraction. Cannot be written as a fraction no matter how hard we try. Um, it's, it's basically, for our purposes right now, a never-ending, non-repeating decimal, okay? A never-ending, non-repeating decimal. 
So it means it's never going to stop. It just goes forever. It's dot, 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 dot. Okay. And it doesn't ever repeat. There's not like three, four, five, 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 forever. It's just a random collection of numbers that go on and on and on and on and on forever. Okay. A random collection of digits. So some examples of irrational numbers. Um, well, one that you might be familiar with, possibly, would be this number right here. Okay, if you recognize that, pi, the number pi, which we sort of approximate as 3.14. We do that a lot in geometry with circles and stuff like that. Um, pi is actually an irrational number. So it is a decimal number that goes on and on and on and on forever and never repeats. We've just sort of rounded it off to 3.14 to make our lives easier. But in reality, the number pi goes on forever and ever and ever. Okay. So that's one example of an irrational number. The main way that we are going to see irrational numbers uh, is sort of why this section is in the chapter nine when we're dealing with square roots. Because another big example of irrational numbers is a square root number that was not in our list of perfect squares at the beginning of this chapter, okay? So for example, the square root of 72. Okay, 72 is not in our list of perfect square numbers. We don't know a number that when we times it by itself, we get 72, right? Eight times eight makes 64, but nine times nine makes 81. So somewhere in between those two must be a number that when we multiply it times itself, we get 72. Um, but a square root of a number that, that doesn't work out really nicely, okay, that, that on your calculator comes up as a decimal, your calculator is going to give you like 10 decimal places, right? So for example, if I did the square root of 72 on my calculator, I would get some decimals, right? It would be eight point something, and then it would stop eventually. But that's just your calculator rounding off that square root, okay? In reality, whenever a square root shows up as a decimal, it goes on and on and on and on forever, okay? It never stops and it never repeats. Uh, any square root number that doesn't come out very nicely, okay? So anything not from our list earlier. Now, if we had a square root number that was from our list, right? Let's say the square root of 36. Okay, the square root of 36. This, if we were to think about it in a different way, is really equal to what? What is the square root of 36? Thinking in the positive now, right? In the positive. Well, it's six, right? The square root of 36 is six, or it could be negative six, but in this case, we're not really worried about that. When we rewrite the square root of 36 as six, is this now something we could write as a fraction? Yeah, it definitely is. We can go over one and we've got it, okay? Over one and we've got it. So certain square roots are rational numbers if they work out very, very nicely, okay? If they come out to be just a normal number, um, then those are rational numbers, right? Otherwise, square roots most of the time are going to be irrational. Uh, they're gonna go on and on and on forever, okay? So that's the two subcategories we get to first. Within the real numbers, all the numbers we've ever seen, We've mostly worked in the past with rational numbers, okay? Numbers that can be fractions or they're decimals that stop or decimals that repeat, right? Or numbers we could put over one and make fractions. If we can make it into a fraction, rational number. If we can't make it into a fraction, irrational number, okay? That's an irrational number. Now, also, I'm gonna point out to you that taking, taking the square root, like if I took the square root of 10, which is an irrational number, and I do like this, and I put over one, this doesn't count, okay? This doesn't count as a fraction because this square root number is, is, is not how we normally see fractions. So just know that, that when I say turn it into a fraction by putting it over one, it can't be a square root number or like pi or something. We can't do that, all right? So rational versus irrational is all about can we make it into a fraction? Now, the rest of these categories here, these other three, are within the rational numbers, okay? They're more specific rational numbers. And these last three categories, they're all numbers that don't have any decimal, okay? So they're numbers that we like to work with, like five or seven or 12 or negative 14 or negative 25. 
Okay, those are numbers that don't have a decimal part. All right now, if we are talking about positive and negatives together, all of them, everything from negative 10 billion up to 10 billion, all the numbers, those are called integers. Okay, integers just means a number that doesn't have a decimal part. Okay, doesn't have a decimal. It could be negative 25, positive 376, negative 10,082. As long as it doesn't have a decimal and then something after that, we call it an integer. Okay. Now, in the past, we've probably called those whole numbers, but whole numbers is actually a different category, so we have to be really careful about this. Okay, whole numbers are numbers that don't have decimal parts, but only the positives and zero. Okay, so no negatives are allowed in what we call the whole number system. Okay, whole numbers are zero, one, two, three, four, and up. Okay. Um, and then more specifically, we just take out one number and we have a set called the natural numbers, okay, a group called natural numbers. And those are like, I think of them as the numbers that we could use to describe what I'm seeing, okay? I am seeing in front of me right now two chairs, or I am seeing in front of me right now 35 penguins, okay? Or I am seeing in front of me right now 173 oranges okay so those are natural numbers it's basically one two three four five and so on and so on and so on and so on one and up okay things we can actually see right we can't actually see zero giraffes if there are zero giraffes we can't see them right if there are negative 17 dollars in the bank account we cannot see them okay so natural numbers are numbers that don't have a decimal part, but only the positives, okay? Only the ones we could actually see in the natural world, okay? So integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, all don't have decimal parts, but they just get more and more specific, okay? Integers, integers, everything. Positives, negatives, zero, everything. Whole numbers cuts out the negatives, okay? Just zero and up. Natural numbers cuts out zero, and just goes one and up, okay? So these are the categories of numbers um, that we're gonna be classifying um, in our practice problems tomorrow. I, I have this displayed a little bit differently for you, okay? So if, if we look at this picture, this sort of shows us how each of these categories fits within the other ones, okay? So my giant box here, this, this big giant box, which I'll highlight in red for us. Okay, this big box here, this is the real numbers. It's everything that you've ever seen in your whole life. Every number that's ever existed. Okay, within the real numbers, as we mentioned, there are irrational numbers, this blue box over here, and there are uh, sorry, rational numbers. Irrational versus rational. Again, that's the difference between can we make it a fraction? Can we not make it a fraction? Okay, can we make it a fraction, that's rational. Can we not make it a fraction, that's irrational. Within the rational numbers then, there are um, three subcategories, right? And these are the ones we talked about in terms of, we'll go yellow and then we'll go purple, yes, okay. So within the rational numbers, we have integers, right? And that's all the ones that don't have decimal parts, okay? So anything negative or positive, just no decimals. Whole numbers is just zero and up. And then natural numbers is the smallest. That's just one, two, three, four, five, six, and going on that way, okay? What you're gonna be asked to do in your practice problems is take a number and decide what category does that fit in, okay? So let's just take as an example here, uh, let's just take the number, uh, let's see, I'm just gonna take the number 17.234, okay, 17.234. That number, 17.234, where would that fit in, in our categories? Well, the first thing that we should ask is, is it a natural number? Is it like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and going on up? No, it's not. Okay, is it zero? No, it's not. 
Does it have a decimal part? Yes, it does. It does have a decimal part. So we're going to be deciding between a rational number or an irrational number. Okay, rational or irrational. Hmm, rational or irrational. Well, remember, rational numbers were ones we could write as fractions, and that included decimals that stopped, right? And this one is a decimal that stops. So 17.234 would absolutely be a rational number. Okay, so I would say, if I were asked where does 17.234 go, I would say that is a rational number. Okay, that's a rational number. Um, let's see, I could also uh, take the number, what if I had the number 18, but then I put it under a square root sign? Okay, square root of 18. If I had the square root of 18, where would that go? Where would that one be? Well, hmm, the square root of 18. If I punch that in on my calculator, does it work out really nicely? Square root of 18 punched in on the calculator. No, it does not. It would be like four point something, four point something, 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 something forever, right? Now your calculator rounds it off, but remember if a square root does not come out nicely on the calculator, it goes on forever. Does it ever repeat itself? No, it doesn't. So the square root of 18 would go in this category. Okay, the square root of 18 would be an irrational number. Okay, so if I were asked, what category does the square root of 18 go in? I would say irrational number, okay? Now, part of your practice is going to be to like check all that apply, okay? So we're gonna have like uh, multiple options and we're gonna be asked to check all that apply in a, in a certain case for a certain number, okay? So as an example, if I were given uh, the number, I'll just say 14. If I'm given the number 14, I already put that in its, in its most specific category, right? Because 14 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, one of those numbers, right? One of the numbers I can count with, one of the numbers I could see. Can I see 14 apples on the table? Yes, I can. I can see 14 apples. I mean, they're not on here right now. That'd be a lot of apples, but it is a natural number, right? 14 is a natural number. So I would absolutely say 14, if I were asked, is a natural number, yes. Is that also a whole number? Well, is it a number that doesn't have a decimal that's zero or positive? Yes, it is. So it is also a whole number. Okay, 14 is a natural number. It's also a whole number, okay? Is 14 also an integer? Well, remember, integers were just numbers that didn't have decimal parts. Is 14 a number that doesn't have a decimal part? Yep, it is. Okay, so that would also be an integer. Is 14 also a rational number? Well, can it be written as a fraction? Yes, it can, right? We go 14 over 1. So it can absolutely be written as a fraction, so it is a rational number. Is 14 a real number? Well, yeah, because all numbers are real numbers, okay? So 14 actually fits into five categories. The only one it does not fit into is irrational numbers over here, okay? Rational numbers and irrational numbers can't, can't happen at the same time. But natural numbers are also whole numbers, and whole numbers are also integers, and integers are also rational numbers. Rational numbers are also real numbers, okay? So there's, there's a lot of categories. So if you, when you get to the problems that ask you to check a bunch of boxes, Make sure that you're thinking, okay, if it's in this category, is it also in this category? Is it also in this category? Is it also in this category? All right. Um, the last example that I will leave you with is if I had a square root number, but underneath my square root is a fraction, like the square root of, let's say, 9 over 16. Okay, the square root of 9 over 16. When you are taking the square root of a fraction and you're wondering what category that fits in, whether it is rational or irrational, um, what I want you to do is I want you to take the square root of each piece, okay? We take the square root of the top number, the square root of the bottom number. If both of them work out okay, then it's a rational number, okay? Then it's in this category. Then it's rational. If one or both of them, when I take the square root, don't work out okay, then it's guaranteed to be an irrational number, okay? So if I have like the square root of nine, if we punch in the square root of nine on our calculator, or if we just know from our list the square root of nine, 
Can we do that? Yeah, we can. It's three, right? The square root of nine is three. Can we do the square root of 16 very nicely? Well, if we put it in on a calculator or use our list, we should realize that square root of 16 comes out to be four. So now I just have this number three over four, and that is absolutely a rational number, okay? That's, that's a rational number. So when you have a square root of a fraction, top and bottom numbers, just do them separately. If they both work out okay, then it's rational. If they don't both work out okay, okay then it's irrational. All right? If you have any other questions about how we classify different numbers in these different categories, or if you have questions about what any of these categories means from here, uh, please make sure that you do reach out to me, either uh, by email, phone, or Zoom office hours. Otherwise, that's all I have for you, and we'll talk to you soon.